Rodrigo Roa Duterte swept the polls last May with an unusual and sometimes contradictory mix of honesty and hyperbole. At times, he blustered and thundered. Other times, he played coy. But now, as president of 100 million Filipinos, President Digong needs to send his messages across with clarity and precision. Just how will he do that? And who will help him do that? Good evening, I'm Tony Abad, and this is Political Capital. With us tonight is our former colleague in TV5, now head of the Presidential Communications Operations Office, or PCOO. Can we just call you Press Secretary, Secretary Martin Andanar? Welcome. Good evening, Tony. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Well, we call it PCO now, okay. Presidential Communications Office. Okay, so that's uh, less... Uh, yes, less old. Less that's old. But we don't say press secretary, or is that an old? <laughs> well, well, the the press secretary is the is the old uh, name for the PCO. Okay. And uh, if you use press secretary, then you go through confirmation. Oh. <laughs> okay. It's an important piece of information. And let's hope Congress doesn't <laughs> get get wind of that. <laughs> no, okay. but but traditionally the press yeah. secretary and the executive secretary does not yeah. go through. Uh, uh, the commission appointments. Uh, even the press secretary. Yeah. How challenging <laughs> this presidency mm. uh, is already. And, and you're, you're, you're hitting the ground running. And I just see that if I were in your place, I'd be, I'd be going crazy. <laughs> but you've done it with such grace, such, uh, oh, thank you. such elegance, no? and, and, and such calm. So I'm, uh, I have to find out your secret. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Tony. Thank you. Uh, it's I, something. It's like you're made for this job. Or? No, I've, I've always believed. <laughs> I'm a staunch believer of behavioral management. Okay. If you put the information yes on one platform yes and then and then you put roadblocks on that platform, now the public will have to find a way to look for that information. Right. So it's 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 a matter of where you open. And I'd also like to believe that with the advent of uh, the different uh, media. Uh, platforms like uh, social media, yes. the more uh, high-tech RTVM or radio television Malacanang yes. and uh, PTV4, we have so many avenues to disseminate the news. Okay. Now Martin, yeah. just a few months back, yeah. we were doing happy hour with <laughs> yeah. now President uh, Duterte. Yeah, that's right. It just seems yeah. like uh, such a short time ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. And October. at that, yeah. that point in time, were you already there thinking, I'm going to be the head of the <laughs> Presidential Communications Office. No, it never <laughs> crossed my mind. Although I wanted to become a public servant because I grew so, up in a family of public servants. My, okay. my, my grandfather yes. was a mayor in Siargao mm -hmm. and my father also was in politics and in the uh, bureaucracy. Uh, my brother and I uh, wanted to be in public okay. service, but so I just it, did not so know when. it was when. in the DNA. Uh, yeah, I suppose and, it was in the blood yes. and it's still in the blood and I have uh, prepared myself in such uh, in in a way. I, I I went to different schools around the world just to study public administration. I know you went to the best school for <laughs> public administration. Uh, I, I I went to the school with the crimson color, <laughs> uh, the, and you are an alumni, the president of the alumni, alumni, yeah, yeah yes. the Harvard, yeah, yeah. That's it's cool. great, it's great experience. In fact, in fact, when I when, when my name was announced by the president, the first uh, model that I thought was a good governance model that I learned in Harvard yes. Kennedy School, which was um, the good governance model, which showed that uh, for you to be able to, to uh, implement a certain project, mm -hmm. you have to think of the Venn diagram that has, uh, the first one is uh, the value of the particular project. Yes. Uh, and then you, you have the capacity, and then you have the legitimacy. So you have to ask, uh, do we have the capacity to do it? Uh, does this have value in terms of national interest? Okay. And the legitimacy, meaning you have to go back and ask your stakeholders, is this really what you want? So, okay. Now tell yeah. us, how did you land in this position? I mean, there's some, mm. there's some background mm. there. You went to Davao and came home to Manila with a, pos mm. a new position. Bong Go. Back then, the Secretary, no? Yes. We crossed 
paths during that campaign, including the one here. No? Yes. And he told me at three, four times that um, once Mayor Duterte wins, uh, they wanted me to join the team. It's easier for him, I guess, to, to tell me to do this, to do that, do this, to do that, to come here. Uh, because of the age and because of the dialect also. Right, right. I, mean, I mean, just imagine uh, a 41-year-old Secretary Bongo asking a 70-year-old Secretary, can you do this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I guess that's one of the aspects okay. also. But, yeah, that, the, but then again, sense. yeah, so he's always offered me the position until one day he, he, he called me. I, I was in Bangkok and he said that uh, when I get back to fly to Davao. So when I was in Davao, I brought with me a, a national communications policy. Proposal. Okay. So that's what I that brought. That was your, your, the Andanar the paper. <laughs> the white paper. The white paper. <laughs> the white paper, yeah. see, Okay. But you also yeah. had an interview mm -hmm. in Davao. Yeah, I had an interview back in 2015, okay. March. I believe I was the first broadcaster from a national broadcasting network to be able to interview the, the mayor back then. And okay. it lasted for two hours. It was an interview for the podcast that I run. Okay. And also, it was used uh, by News 5. No? Okay. And from then on, uh, we discovered that uh, we, we both come from the same uh, blood uh, lineage. Okay. Uh, me, me, the president the Duterte coming from the Sampurna royalty clan of the, of the Muslims in Lanao. Yes. And myself also. So, oh. so ties that so bind. <laughs> well, ties that bind. Oh, but well, okay. the, the thing is, uh, when you're president, everybody's a relative. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. Now, Martin, you're at your fingertips now is the biggest media network, mm. actually, mm. with the government. And now we're ju just talking about PTP4, mm -hmm. we're talking about all, you know, uh -huh. Radio Nang Bayan. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just all different mm -hmm. uh, types of media now at your mm -hmm. fingertips. Mm -hmm. what, is your, what is your vision for now for this, mm. uh, this whole system? Because mm -hmm. uh, I understand you're going to use this as a, really as a tool for, uh, really for information. The first step is to change the charter of PTV. If you notice, we have Rajanambayan, we have PTV4. Yes. Rajanambayan is the national radio network of the country. Yes. We have about 33 radio stations there, including AM and FM. And we also have PTV4. We have about 27 television stations across the nation. Mm -hmm. Now, Rajanambayan is a government agency, while PTV is a government-owned corporation. So it's okay. got the corporate body yes. uh, character. Now, the... The goal is to integrate both to create the People's Broadcasting Corporation so that one will not be left behind right. when, when the other one is being improved. Now, uh, since the other one is GOCC, it does not get money or it does not get appropriations from Congress. Okay. While Rajanambayan does. Yes. So okay. now we, we have to have one vision creating the, in a more... Uh, well, so, so it's easier to understand. We wanted to create a BBC of the country. Yes. Or an ABC, a CBC of, of the Philippines. And the only way to do that is to change the charter of PTV, integrate it, okay. and uh, make it a hybrid of a BBC charter and also the current charter that we have, yes. which makes PTV uh, self-sustaining and change some clause there that will allow the public broadcasting network to receive um, support from Congress. Okay. Mm -hmm. Social media? Social media included, yeah. Okay. Uh, social media, even print. Yes. Uh, we own the biggest printing, printing uh, company in the Philippines, which is the National Printing Office, NPO. Okay. And uh, the plan is also to be able to print some free tabloids or yeah, I, understand, I understand you want to come up with a government tabloid. Yeah, government tabloid, okay. but uh, strategically targeted to uh, barrios or towns okay. that don't have newspapers. So will it have chismis also in the usual tabloid uh, it, it will be <laughs> father? <laughs> so well, it will be more developmental okay. uh, in such a way. And, and also informing the... The country, our countrymen yes. in the countryside, the government services that are available. And I suppose, and for general patronage. Yes, yes. of course. Of course. <laughs> so, of course. The, the title is Mula Samasa Para Samasa. 
it's an offshoot of the Gikan Samasa Para Samasa program yes. of President Duterte in Davao, which we will make it nationwide in, okay. in a few weeks from now. Okay. So it's going to be on television, radio, uh, online, and on tabloid. Okay. And languages, are you? Filipino. Tagalog. Tagalog, because you know, it's nationwide okay. already. And are you going to have yeah. a Visayan version or uh, an Ilocano version? May, maybe uh, soon, yes. once we uh, get our act together and we get our okay. but for uh, appointments. Now it's Tagalog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for now, it's Tagalog. It's easier to print, plus uh, you know, it's, it's, okay. it's more efficient. Yeah. Now, the problem sometimes that government broadcasting, <clears throat> government media tends to suffer from is the perception mm -hmm. that it's a propaganda machine. How are you planning to overcome this mm -hmm. sort of perception? Or? It, it's the same perception, Tony, yes. with the commercial TV and radio stations producing programs that the advertisers want. Yes. So it's, it's, a, it's, a same, it's the same problem, no? Okay. Now, the, on our part, uh, the, the president has uh, expressed clearly in our first cabinet meeting that he wanted a public broadcasting corporation mm -hmm. that has complete editorial independence. Okay. And he wanted that in the clause uh, of this new charter. So we included that. Yes, because and you said you wanted a BBC type. A BBC of, type. Uh, although, although BBC, ABC, CBC in Canada, they have their own fair share of, uh, of uh, issues. Yes in terms of uh, editorial independence. Now, we will go through a, a lot okay. uh, along the way, but it should not stop us from, from yeah. dreaming of having one. When we come back, transparency and government's relations with media. Stay with us. You're watching Political Capital, and with us is Press Secretary Martin Andanar. I'm sure, oh, yeah, you know, so. in your position, yeah. FOI, <laughs> you know, rings uh, <laughs> a big bell. That's the first executive order that I, that I really uh, fought uh, tooth and nail when, when I got appointed. Yes. The first thing that I did was to remind the, the president of his promise of a Freedom of Information Executive Order. So I've been in and out of the Executive Secretary's office. Uh, I've been pestering him and I'm, I'm sure he's already annoyed by me. Okay. <laughs> you, know, you know why? A policy that is being um, recommended uh, usually does not end the way it was uh, thought to be. Yes. Uh, and and, and it's, not, um, it's not dependent on the original concept, it's not dependent on the organizational routine, but it's dependent on who fights for it. Right. <laughs> so, I go, uh, and then I learned that in the first week. So, I go, Hira pala, you really have to go out there. It will strengthen the right to information okay. that is enshrined in our constitution. Okay. Uh, it will state clearly which information is free for all, which information is not. Yes. Uh, in, in those uh, two okay. uh, concrete terms. So you're balancing, let's say, national security. Yes, exactly. And, of yeah. course, what people need to know about uh, exactly. what the government yeah. is doing. No? Yeah, so what we're doing is we're coming up with an FOI EO manual okay. for everyone. You can download it. For government officials, they have to read it. And it states there that each head of agency should assign at least one person okay. to take care or to supervise anything that go any request that comes in for information okay. and that request if there's questions on the request the question should be um, should be addressed to the solicitor general okay now if the if the soljen says that uh, everything is above board then you have to release information if the officer refuses to release the information then he or she could face administrative uh, san sanctions was uh, was the president also inclined no, with this with in spite of this executive order coming mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. will he still be inclined to support the passage of a law yes as as uh, as he said yeah, he would i i, I think support. tony more than anything else it's really the symbol you know it's a, it's a, it's a way of showing everyone that this is a priority for the president yes and, I, and strengthening. I won't wait. I won't wait for Congress. I won't I'm wait. Go ahead. <laughs> I won't wait. And uh, you know, here, here's, here's. I'm, I'm, I'm telegraphing my punches already, and it's up to you. And uh, in a way, it's good also because the president respects the independence of, of the, of the branch, okay. of the legislative branch. You know, so it's up to them. 
But uh, for now, I think uh, a congressman already passed uh, a new version of the FOI. Is, is uh, the president inclined towards one version or the other? I suppose the executive order, Yes. Uh, what the, the implementing rules and regulations of the executive order, I think it will be a good uh, legal president for, for Congress to study. Okay. Yeah. Let me ask you about the relationship between the president <laughs> and media. I knew it was coming. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I can smell it a mile away. <laughs> so so how, how is it now? I mean, uh, mm. since, uh, since he was, uh, you know, this, all this talk about corruption in, 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 in media yeah. mm. being the reason for certain journalists mm -hmm. actually getting, getting killed. More than the facade, and more than the FOI, we see an administrative order creating a task force against media killings. Yes. It will be signed right. with the president. So if you read between the lines and, and see those two uh, AO and one EO, then you'll see that the president cares for the media. Yes. So now, was he misquoted? Or was he misinterpreted? Misinterpreted, I think it's more than anything, it's a, a cultural difference. Different culture in Davao, the way, the way the president engages the media, and different culture in Manila, the way we are we are uh, used to yes. being engaged by the politicians here in Manila. And what I guess for our benefit, what is that difference? What you know, what is the lesson that uh, Davao-based or Mindanao-based mm. journalists can offer? Oh the Manila, you know, Imperial Manila journalists. It's, it's, it's as simple as understanding the preposterous uh, pronouncements <laughs> of the president. I mean, if yeah, it's yeah. preposterous, don't take it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> preposterous. <laughs> That's what he yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I say a lot of things that are preposterous and yeah. don't take me seriously. Uh, <laughs> and th there will be a, a time for getting to know each other and and Manila Press, uh, the national press are getting to know the president now. Yes. But you know what, Tony? I think that this, this uh, temporary uh, standoff no? yeah. with, with the media, uh, this gives the executive department very important and ample time to focus on the work. I think, I think yes. this, is, this, is, this is why in the past, what, uh, 19 days, you're seeing all of these uh, policies being announced by the president right. and, and actions they being were done saying by the that president. you know in yeah. just uh, seven days mm -hmm. now it's only gonna be two weeks mm -hmm. there's just so many things that have actually yeah. happened yeah. we haven't yeah. <laughs> maybe people have taken for granted mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. like for example uh, another one would be reading the line reading the between the lines and what the president says if he says that about the West Philippine Sea if he says that uh, offers uh, former president FVR to yes. be a special envoy. So what does it mean? I mean, for an intelligent person like you, you know that it's bilateral. Yes. So it's just reading between the lines. We'll have more with Press Secretary Martin Andanar when we return. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're still with Political Capital together with Secretary Martin Andanar. How would you define President Digong's communication mm -hmm. strategy? Mm -hmm. You know, if the president were a director of a film, then that film would be a blockbuster. <laughs> if epic, he, epic. If he could be a Martin Scorsese. Yeah. <laughs> 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 if he, he could be a George Lucas. That's how good he is. And he knows how to connect to the masses. Okay. So th that's the difference between the president and uh, I suppose the other leaders that we've had. Yes. Uh, president uh, Rodi Duterte is, is grounded mm -hmm. and even if he's the president, he still goes to the carinderia, eats his food there, he still goes to the taxi drivers, talk to them. There's no pretension. That's why he's so loved by the masses. Does he really go around 
puts on his helmet and he really goes around. In Davao, yeah. Okay. But here in Metro Manila, is <laughs> not, not that I, not that I know of. <laughs> okay, I, I, I read something about him no, I think that going was, around. Uh, I think that was a, you know, that, that whoever invented that story, you go to my office and apply, give you a job. I'm going to go on a story, yeah. Oh. Very imaginative. <laughs> Stories, no? And then I notice yeah. he goes like, yeah. he goes topic by topic or issue by issue. Mm -hmm. He knows it by heart. It's like he has a filing cabinet in his brain. Okay. And that filing cabinet, the drawers would have its its own its own topics, and, and he knows which one to pull, to draw. The only time that I saw him use a teleprompter was during the inaugural. That's right. I... It was the only time. And uh, as a protocol, the president always has the what, two, was... two teleprompters yeah. in front of him. And the second time that I saw him, in a uh, public address yes. was at the PNP uh, turnover ceremony at the AFP and there were speeches ready and said okay. and then Secretary Bong told me turn that off it doesn't need it it seems the president knows mm. everything about mm. media and then he has mm. he wants to deal with media in a certain way so okay. what is your advice my advice me? is simple in my few weeks working with the president he tells us that you, you don't owe us you don't owe me anything you owe it to the flag. So when you write a story, you make sure that that story is for nation building. How does he avoid situations where certain sectors, maybe certain people, mm -hmm. or certain companies, yeah. are trying to push their own agenda and call it the national agenda, or mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. try to put it into national interest terms? The president listens to his men and women during the cabinet. Yes. Uh, we are given our own time and space to deliver the policies that we want to advance in the government. And he strikes it out if he doesn't, if he feels that it's against the interest of the people or the, or the national interest. That's how it is. It's, it's as straight as that. And uh, he clustered the cabinet into different, uh, there's a policy on economic cluster, there's yes. a security cluster. And it's good because I'm always privy to what happens in a cluster because that's being good. the information guy, I, I have to be You're there. there. Yeah, yeah. I have to be there so all the that's time. That's right. It's, a, yeah. and, it's um, a challenging task. Yeah, but, but the yeah. chairman, uh, usually the executive secretary, uh, is a perfect alter ego of the president because he thinks alike. Boss Idol Martin, thank you so much for <laughs> taking the time to be with, with us here in Bloomberg TV, you know, in the, back in the studio. Thank you, Tony. Best yeah. of luck. You're doing Thank a good you, job so far. Thank you, sir. Thank you very Thank you much. for having me. Yes. Thank you. In the end, communications is key in any administration. And with President Duterte, an unpredictable leader who's gearing towards total radical change, that unenviable task of putting forward a clear and unambiguous message falls on Secretary Martin Andanar. I'm Tony Abad. Thank you, and we'll see you again next week.